Hello everybody and welcome back. There's a YouTube channel and blog called Hitchhiker's Guide 42 um, and they do have some really good stories in there. So I found one today and I wanted to share it with you. It says, Encounter of the Third Kind, Philip Spencer, The Ilkley Moor Encounter, UK, 1987. Ilkley Moor, known worldwide because of its links with the Bronte family, can be a remote and desolate place at the best of times. Many times, the only living creatures on the moor are sheep. Like Ilkley has other legends too, like hovering lights, which bring occasional reports of UFOs. There are strange swirling lights that are filtered through the fog and seem to have a mind of their own. Um, there's a wildman account there um, about a gentleman who had stones thrown at him and structures were found, and he was actually... In a very similar way to the old Canadian story, he was picked up and taken to a structure, um, and that was his account. Uh, but this is about Phil Spencer and his incident. After four years of being a Metropolitan Policeman in London, Philip Spencer had left his job and moved with his wife and baby to West Yorkshire um, in the area of the Ilkley Moor. One early morning, Phil decided to take a walk across Ilkley Moor towards his father-in-law's house some miles away. He took with him a camera loaded with fast film with the intention of photographing the mysterious lights which are often spotted on the moor. Along with his camera, Spencer also took a compass to navigate through the fog before sufficient daylight shone through the moor. As he was searching for some photo angles, suddenly he caught sight of a strange looking being in the slopes ahead of him. He aimed and snapped a picture of the creature which seemed to be gesturing for him to stay away. He managed to take one photograph of the creature before it then ran away. Spencer gathered his wits and took off in pursuit of the being. Today, he says he doesn't know why. It was just an impulse reaction. He arrived just in time to get a glimpse of a flying craft with a dome top rise from the moor and disappear into the sky at great speed. He didn't manage to get a photograph of the UFO as it happened too fast and he was in shock but he was convinced he had captured the creature he saw on film. When he saw nothing else of the being or its craft, he began walk, to walk back to the nearest village. This walk took about 30 minutes. Spencer walked to the nearest village to get his film developed and was surprised to find his compass pointing in the wrong direction. And also the village clock showed a different time to his watch, two hours ahead. He headed by bus to the nearest town with his instant film development. Sure enough, he had a picture of the creature. It looked to be about four foot tall and had a blue-green tint to its skin. He knew he had something of importance, or at least he thought he did. He found the proper channels to contact, and he contacted Peter Huff. Huff knew what he was hearing was too good to be true, and it worried him. But after seeing Spencer, he was convinced that he was a man of integrity and was not seeking fame or fortune for his picture. There was no reason to not believe what Spencer had told him. The photograph was next sent to the Kodak lab in Hemel Hempstead. An analysis showed that the object was indeed part of the original photograph and was not superimposed. Next, the picture was sent to the United States for computer enhancement. Dr. Bruce Maccabee, optical physicist with the United States Navy, gave his expert conclusion. He stated that the slow film speed used for the low light conditions made the film too grainy for proper testing. I had great hopes in this case and that it would prove definitive. Sadly, the circumstances prevent it from being so. Now, there have been numerous theories and much speculation about Ilkley Moor photograph. Because of the poor lighting conditions present on the moor at the time where the picture was being taken, it was not possible to get a complete and definite conclusion. Just a month or so later, in January, Spencer would have a visit from the men in black. On a Friday evening, Spencer heard a knock on his front door. He opened it and saw two men of middle age. They were dressed in typical men of black suits. Both men showed Spencer their Ministry of Defence identification badges. Humorously, their names were Jefferson and Davies. Spencer, not knowing what to expect from the two visitors, invited them inside, and the three sat down for a talk. One of the alleged agents, Jefferson, told him that he had come to discuss his encounter the month before in Ilkley Moor. The two men were very well versed on the case, 
and asked him a number of questions about what had happened in December 1987. Not sure how to react and yet afraid to offend them in case they were official and were government officials, he told them about the photograph he had taken. Svensson, not wanting to have the photo confiscated, lied to the two men and told them that a friend of his had the photograph. In fact, Hugh had the photograph and was having it analysed at the time. Almost immediately, the two men seemed to lose interest in questioning Spencer any further and left. So, um, if you're looking for another channel to have some strange and wonderful stories, look for Hitchhiker's Guide and I will add a link into the video description below. So, until next time, thank you very much. Good night.